Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. I am pleased and privileged to be joined today on the summit by the head football coach of the Fort Hayes State Tigers, Coach Chris Brown, in his 10th season with the program. Coach, I know that there wasn't as much going on in 2020. Obviously, there was a lot going on, depending upon your perspective, but from a sports perspective, not so much there. You had a couple of uh, joint practices, scrimmages, I think three overall in, in the spring. But I would imagine your boys are ready to make some contact with uh, real contact with players with a uh, different color jersey on. Talk about that. Is is that the case? Are they ready to go? And, and in light of that, then, does camp look any different with basically a year off? You know, it is going to be a little bit different. It's just getting used, you know, used to the the grind of that every day of camp, you know, with, with the meetings and the and the and the practices and, you know, getting up early and weights and, you know, all those things are going to be a little bit, little bit different because they haven't done that for almost a year and a half. And, uh, but I think our kids will adjust well, you know, they've done a good job this summer of coming in and, and getting themselves prepared. Um, I think we have 75 guys here this summer, which is, which is a big number. And, uh, you know, it's grown since I've been here. My very first year here 10 years ago was, you know, we had 12 kids. And that's not very many. And then it's hard to win when your kids aren't here and doing the things they need to do to, to make themselves better. But it is going to be different. Um, I'm excited. Um, it's been a long time since you've actually got on the field and really coached, you know, for a season. And uh, so it's probably going to be a little more amped up. You know, we're probably going to have a little more excitement, a little more energy. Um, kids are probably going to get chewed a little bit more than they normally do because we haven't done that for, you know, a year and a half. So, uh, but no, I'm excited. I mean, our kids are excited. I can't wait, you know, until August 9th, our first practice, and uh, just to see where these kids are at and, and see you know, the excitement on their faces and, and, and the way they work, you know, through the week. I'm sure the strength and conditioning coaches and staff really are, are earning their keep now during the summer <laughs> in ways that they haven't done before. Yeah, it was a it was a hard time. I mean, this this whole year, you know, for them it was hard just the way we had to do things with the numbers that we could have in the weight room and, and those things. And now we're back to some normalcy a little bit where, you know, they are get they are they are earning their money. That is for dang sure. And uh, you know, they're doing it on a daily basis. I know Coach Boucher, our guy, he gets here, you know, at six a.m. every single morning. You know, to to have our guys work out. Um, you know, with him. And of course, it's all voluntary right now, but. You know, those kids are bought into what we're doing. He's bought into what we're doing. Uh, we have a great working relationship. Uh, we talk about everything and, and the things that he's doing and the things that we're trying to accomplish as a, as a football team as well. And, uh, you know, I love having him on our staff. You know, Coach Boucher's done a great job. Um, gets our kids ready. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, I need these kids. Cause, you know, you usually try to get about 90% ready, you know, by the time camp starts. And then you kind of build them up to that 100% through camp. But I told him, I said, I need to get them to 100 before camp starts because, you know, it's going to be a grind on him. We've got to have him ready. And, you know, he's all in. He's bought in. He's got these kids motivated and excited. And uh, I'm so lucky to have him on my staff. It's been a successful program, especially in, in the last three or four years, uh, what you all have been able to accomplish on the field, a couple of MIAA championships as well. Coach, I, I look at the then players that are coming back, and I, I think at least from the offensive perspective, you start with Chance Fuller, and, and he's someone who you told me a couple of years ago, even as as he was a young player, that that the team trusted him, that they uh, they saw something in him and, and that they were going to, to have his back. And his first full season, really, in in that quarterback position, made all region, all MIAA, set a program record for touchdown passes, and and it looks like that uh, he's just set to continue from where he left off. Yeah, he is. He's a great young man. You know, he comes to work every single day um, in the film room, in his playbook. You know, getting with his teammates. You know, especially the receivers and stuff, and trying to get on the same page. You know, I think they do that three or four times a week. You know, just receivers running around, so they do seven on seven and those things. You know, together. But he's just the guy that the guys like. You know, he cares about his teammates. He's there for his teammates. If they need something, he's going to be there in their corner to, to help them out. And uh, he's just a real likable kid. You know, great personality. Um, he's got nice long blonde hair. You know, which I wish I had a little bit of hair. Uh, but you know, he's just just one of those kids that, that people you know gravitate towards too. And uh, you know, we're we're glad to have him on our team. He's done a great job of molding the younger quarterbacks as well and getting them prepared. Um, does a great job with his offensive linemen and, and thanking them for all the protection that they give him, you know, on a, on a weekly basis. And, uh, you know, he's just got the all-around package. Great kid, smart in the classroom. I mean, he's a 3'8 student at least, and they know he's great on the football field. And just everything that he does, he, he's going to try his best to, to be the best at it. And, uh, you know, he does that on a, daily, on a weekly basis, just trying to improve his game and you know, improve the guys around him. 
Coach, I, I remember having long blonde hair. It, uh, trust me, it, it did actually exist at one point in time. Maybe not that long, but I did notice another quarterback on your roster with long blonde hair too, so I was wondering if that might be uh, something you're looking for in recruiting. But I'll, I'll let that go. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> We're speaking now with Chris Brown, <clears throat> excuse me, the head football coach at Fort Hayes State, a two-time coach of the year in the MIAA, and even back in your playing days, a Division II player of the year on a national scale. Coach, when you look at the defense now, and I look back at what you all did in, in 2019, another successful season, 8-3 and three overall. When your defense was on, I mean, it was on. You you held five of your 11 opponents to single-digit scoring, and, and that's pretty impressive any way around, but I believe especially in the MIAA. It is. It, it's tough to do, you know, especially as, as powerful as these offenses are. Um, they're high scoring. And, you know, in our defenses, you know, Coach Harris and our defensive staff have done a great job of, you know, preparing our kids, you know, on a weekly basis, trying to keep it simple, you know, enough so they don't have to think so much while they're playing, um, doing the things that they do well, um, finding out, you know, finding schemes that, that will work, you know, against each opponent each week and uh, not really getting off our schemes too much, which is maybe just adding a few things here and there, but they prepare those kids. They get them ready. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, kids get injured and then they got that next kid ready to come in and ready to play. So, uh, you know, that, that staff's done a great job and, and they're, they continue to get those kids better, you know, each, each week. And, you know, when you look at across the board, you know, defensively, you know, we got some guys coming back. You know, Javar Sanders on, as a defensive tackle. You know, he was a senior, graduated. He's going to come back. Sterling Swope, senior, graduated. He's going to come back, defensive end. Um, we got a couple of young guys going to step up for us. Wyatt Seidel is a kid that got some playing time that we're expecting to, to start for us this year. And uh, there's some other kids as well. And then the linebacker position, I mean, we got some good kids. Lake Hyman is going to be returning for us. Um, actually, in a year's time, he's done a lot of things. You know, he's, he's graduated from college. Um, he's gotten married. He's, he's got a child on the way, you know, all these different things, but just another great young man that has done everything right. Um, probably a 3-8, 4 student in the classroom as well, you know, Lake is. And uh, it's good to have him back as that line, one of those linebackers that's going to lead our defense. And then Miles Menges, who hasn't really played a lot for us, but just when you see his length and his, and, and his speed, I mean, he's a 6-4 guy that played quarterback at an eight-man school here in, in Claflin, Kansas, and uh, at Central Plains, and he's going to do well for us. And in the second day, we've got some guys returning. With Jordan Starks, you know, our, our safety, who I feel is probably one of the best safeties, you know, in, in our conference. Um, and then Jaime Preston and, and, and some other guys that I just really feel are, are going to do a great job on that defense, and, and hopefully it's solid again. Coach, the schedule gets underway with a couple of Thursday night games coming up uh, starting September 2nd, September 9th, those Thursday night games. And I'm not sure that the MIAA schedule makers did you all any favors unless you really like a front-loaded schedule. You're going to start off a, a home game against Northwest Missouri, a perennial power, and, and a team that you all have had some pretty good games against, especially in recent years. And then you travel on a Thursday night over to St. Joseph, Missouri to take on Missouri Western. Always a, always a tough program as well. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's going to be tough, you know, when you look at the years past, it's either been Central Missouri, the Mo West, or, or somebody <laughs> like that as well. But now we've got a Northwest, you know, to the mix. And, you know, Coach Wright's going to have his guys ready. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad they have to travel here. You know, it, it's, it, it's a hard road. <laughs> it's a hard trip. And, uh, you know, we're used to traveling as far as we do, you know, on a weekly basis. But, you know, he'll have his guys ready. You know, you look at the last three games that we played against him, the difference is five points, you know, two one point victories for us there. Then they won by three points in overtime here, you know, then the, the third one. So it's always going to be a good game. It's a tough game. It's, it's two good, you know, programs, you know, going after um, a lot of respect for one another. And, you know, you can see that on the field as our kids play, the, the respect that they have for one another. Um, both teams have fun playing this game because they know it's going to be a good football game. And it's just a good competitive football game where, you know, and Coach Rice, one of my best friends, you know, we, we, we talk quite a bit on the phone and, uh, you know, but I always tell him, you know, when we're playing during that four quarters, you're my enemy. And he goes, well, same thing, Brown. But <laughs> and then we'll talk after and we'll, you know, we'll communicate on the road while he's traveling home. We'll talk a little bit and, and just kind of hash out the game. And but it's good to have that relationship, you know, with, with other coaches in this league. And uh, but it is it is front. It's going to be tough. I mean, any game in this conference is tough. And, uh, you know, we just start with really two good teams that, that that's going to make a difference, you know, in how this conference race turns out. 
Well, it, it should be an interesting conference race, and I know everyone's ready to to see that once again. And you know, you talk about making that trip to Hayes. It's a beautiful campus, Coach. It really is, and, and a fantastic stadium that you all get to play in. So uh, it looks like a great place to go. September the 2nd, it's a Thursday night. Northwest Missouri, the Bearcats are going to be in town in Hayes to get the MIAA schedule underway. Coach Chris Brown, I appreciate the time that you give us, and uh, success to you all, to the Tigers this season. And thank you very much for taking some time with us here on the Summit. Hey, Joe, I appreciate you and all you guys do. Thank you so much.